having put the two chassis together, it's now time to look at the running gear. I've got my bench here. I've, I've already uh, put together or mocked up one of the wagons, but we'll look at the second one together. Uh, so I've used up two of my uh, sets of wheels. I bought this as a these wheels as a set of five. I find it always pays to buy <laughs> when you see somebody selling an odd number of bogies or wheels. It's typically quite a good deal, and eventually you'll find somebody else selling an odd number of bogies or wheels and you'll get a good deal then. So in the long run, uh, it works out. So I've got, got a spare pair of wheels. I'm going to put that away uh, under the bench for another project. <laughs> and here we've got these two sets of wheels. So overall, the five sets of wheels set me back around about £50. Um, the club in Oxford, the Model Engineering Society, were replacing all of their... Uh, wheel sets under the underneath their raised uh, raised track carriages, and so uh, I got a, a good deal from a nice chap called Dennis. Thank you very much, Dennis. Um, so we've got our wheels here, and um, I just went on eBay and bought uh, some fairly cheap plumber block or pillow block uh, bearings sealed, all raised bearings. Uh, having measured the stubs on the end of the axles. And these have got a little grub screw, or two little, two little grub screws, uh, which we'll use to secure them to the axles when we come to finally assembling everything. And um, the first thing I'm doing is just, these are quite rusty as you can see, I'm just going to uh, take the worst of it off with a piece of emery. Emery cloth, just to help the bearings on their way onto the ends of the axles. Then we're going to take a pair of bearings, having moved the grub screws so that they're, so that they're not fouling the bores. To take a pair of bearings. And then I'm just going to assemble them onto the axles. And right, and then catch that on the vise. And we're just going to take a little chunk of softwood, make sure that it's pressed against the end of the bearing, and just hammer it on like that until it's all the way home. So um, that's the first one. Second one's not too easy because we've now got a bearing on the end. There we are. Uh, we pop that on there again. Piece of wood. And we're just going to hit it home. Until we're all the way home. Still a bit further to go. There we are. So we've got ourselves a pair of wheels axle boxes and then I'm using these uh, these are little rubber mounts and these have got let me just check yeah these have got an M6 um, female end and an M6 male end now with the previous wagons they had big old pillow block bearings with an M12 hole through. Is this M12? Let me just check. Oh no, M10. An M10. So I used an M10 coach bolt with M10 nuts, you'll have to imagine them, uh, to hold them on. Obviously we're going to have a slight problem here, so I've got my M6 uh, rubber mounts. And then I'm probably going to use the same coach bolts, but I might turn down and put an M6 thread on, which will engage uh, with these bearing mounts. So we'll have a pair of um, coach bolts set into here, one, two, for each bearing. And then those will, these rubber mounts will screw into those, and then we'll attach the um, 
the bearings onto the end of those. I'll just get on with the other pair. I've just mocked up the uh, wheels and axle boxes with the sole bars to see how the ride height compares with the two existing wagons. I had thought that I was going to have to put a shim in between the uh, the rubber spring, the, the rubber mounts on the axle boxes or between those and the sole bars to bring the height up a bit but actually I think for the amount of extra effort it's worth I didn't see there's any issue with this slight difference in ride height. Um, if I use them as bolsters then I'll use the, try and use the uh, correct pairs but it doesn't really matter too much. This is only maybe four mil difference between them. I've just put on two of the bodies. One thing that's, that's become apparent is I've obviously made these slightly shorter than they should have been uh, in terms of the distance between the insides of the buffer beams. Between here and here is smaller so I might have to file some slight chamfers here and here in order to get the grey tubs to fit snugly into the chassis. But overall I'm quite pleased. Uh, this is what the setup looks like underneath and it's not quite as industrial and over the top as these ones but I think it'll do the job. Right, I hope this angle works. Now we're going to mark the position of the holes that we're going to drill through the sole bars to keep our axle boxes uh, our bearings in the right place. Now although they're going to be sitting up on these uh, mounts, I've removed them so I can mark through uh, the, the holes uh, in the bearing box themselves. So um, we should have here, uh, from between these two points should be two feet, and between these two points here, and on the outside should be one foot, so we can use that as a, as a, as a guide. I've put the axle boxes on the end of the, or the bearings on the end of the uh, wheel sets, and just using a pair of odd leg calipers, I've been finding where the uh, centre lines are for the holes, and in, in the bearing blocks. And if they're not quite aligned perpendicular to the axle, you can give them a little bit of a little bit of friendly advice from Mr. Hammer and line them up properly. So a bit of trial and error and we find that uh, about 14 mil should be the right amount. And then we can go along and just score a little line all the way along where they're to go. Like that. So that's where that's how far in these holes are going to be going, and that will vary depending on the wheel sets and the bearings that you buy. <laughs> Hopefully you've got uh, axle stubs that are long enough um, so that you're not drilling into midair. Next we're going to take our ruler and we're just going to find the centre point again. Again that should be approximately one foot from this end. But, uh, We'll just see, yep, so there's this slight misalignment. And again, so we're just going to take the midpoint of those two marks. That's our midpoint. And we want a wheelbase of 12 inches. So I'm going to measure six inches in from the centre. Put a mark in there. Six inches. 
either way. Okay, so just make those a bit clearer. So, now from our axle boxes we can, or our bearing blocks, we can see that we need holes about 55 millimetres apart. So I'll just use my ruler to measure uh, 55 mil apart. So that's the ruler on 27 and a half. Oh dear, <laughs> right on the knot. That should be all right. Now again, I'm just going to use the square to mark those across like that. And then just to highlight things, I'm going to run my uh, marker along here. So now when we put everything back in place, we should see a nice cross uh, in between. Now that wants to go a bit further that way. Like that. That's maybe a bit like that. There we go. So let's just use our square to visually see that everything's all right. And we'll just double check that we've got the wheelbase correct, one foot apart. And then I'm just going to use a punch to punch in the centre of the holes, which might not actually be quite where I thought they were, but they are horrible. Oh dear, <laughs> that to happen, didn't it? Okay, so we've got our punches, um, our holes marked, here are our wheel sets, I'm going to put them away where they won't come to any mischief, and then We'll drill these through. Um, again, I'm going to drill them through six and a half mil um, for M6 uh, coach bolts. Um, I've changed my mind. I'm not going to use M10 coach bolts and turn them down. I think that would be silly. So I've bought some stainless steel M6 coach bolts, which will be on the way. What we've got to do first, though, is to move our drill press. There we are up here, clean out the flutes of our drill, so that we've got some room to manoeuvre. Okay, so then we're going to be coming in, I'm just going to make sure that the alignment's all right. And that six and a half mil drill is going to give us a little bit of play, and then we're just going to drill them through. And then we're going to come through and we're going to use a spade bit uh, to put in some recesses and that's what the coach bolts will sit into. Just looking at the breakthrough of those holes on the other side, I should probably be using a backing piece of wood uh, to try and reduce that. but. I'm not sure that I can juggle these chassis and a piece of backing wood. 
all together. So I uh, made a slight mistake here, but this <laughs> this line, so we're just going to drill these. It's now uh, uh, late January, and uh, I finally managed to take a break from the, uh, the finishing my PhD uh, for a few hours to, to get on with the top wagons chassis. Uh, we've already drilled the holes in the frame. I've got some. M6 coach bolts, uh, which are going to sit in the, in the holes in the frames, uh, like that. And I just need to uh, counterball these holes to give the heads of these coach bolts somewhere to live. So um, I've got a spade bit set up in the uh, drill press. Yeah. Top the safety scarf away, and um, must make sure I get the get these the right way round. They've got a, a nice presentable side and a less presentable side. I think this is this way round. And I've put a stop here so that um, when the, the drill gets to that point, it will have drilled to the correct depth for these bolts to protrude out the other side by the amount that I want, so that then. The suspension mounts will screw in nicely. So let's, uh, let's get on with this. So we've got those counterboard. I'm just going to quickly uh, deburr the holes on this side. So now it's time to sink these coach bolts into their holes and the square shoulders on them will bite into the wood uh, and will stop them from rotating. Counterboard the hole slightly too big, so it doesn't matter if the counterbore is slightly misaligned. So, just need a drift so that we can hit this with a hammer and not make a massive mess. chassis isn't completely uh, set up yet, so it's not not yet completely tightened down, and we've still got some brackets to attach. So, Oops. let's put these back up here. over. You can see the, uh, the ends of the coach bolts now poking through and we get our suspension mounts, anti-vibration mounts and they just screw on nicely. Like that. And when it comes to the final assembly I'll put a drop of Tidy up. Shocking, 
I know. Let's see, all things being well, our wheel sets should just should just slot slot on top. Like that. There we go. How about that? Some M6 nuts just to temporarily hold them in place. Remember we've got to take this all apart for painting so I'm not going to do any of these uh, up. I just want to uh, give it a quick roll up and down the track to see that it falls well. Still to do, we've got the, um, the sole bar end protectors. There's some sheet metal work to, to be done there. I need to uh, address the the ends of the uh, of the buffers because I found that I've actually got them slightly too uh, too close together uh, for the tubs to the the old tubs to fit in place. So I just need to uh, file the, uh, the top sides of those back. But um, there we are. Uh, we also need some couplings. But there we go. Let's see how it rolls. Out on the track, a bit blustery. Let's give it a kick. Right, that's not so bad, is it? You can go and join its friend over there. Here we are, four tub wagons in a row. The new, the two new tubs arrived just the other day. Uh, you can see what they look like in their unpainted state. They're very neat, very tidy, and uh, they would do just nicely, actually, exactly as is. You'd have to be a bit of an idiot to uh, want to paint lovely galvanized steel gray. Uh, but there we are. Uh, I've uh, I've set the precedents now, and now I need to uh, <laughs> I need to keep going. So uh, we'll cover how to uh, how to paint them to uh, to match these in another another instalment. But uh, yeah, that's four four little wagons. We can handle quite a lot of quite a lot of um, manure with this lot. And you can see here the rounded buffers and the difference with the old ones with the square buffers. Just to round off this video I thought I'd quickly show you how I fitted the buffer beam protectors. These are strips of 0.5mm steel that I cut um, on the department's guillotine and they're just fitted by hand uh, clamping them to the buffers and using the um, buffers themselves as the former. Of course you have to um, take them off to finish the bend because the steel has a bit of spring to it so you've got to slightly over bend it to get it where you want it to be. Very simple, these will be drilled through, you might just be able to see I've already uh, marked them out for drilling and then a piece of 6 mil studding will hold them in place uh, that, that runs through the buffer. So that's all for this one. See you next time.